Greetings, Carl Richards from Behavior Up here. Um, I just wanted to talk through what I think of as a guide to scary markets. Um, but I think it can be thought of more broadly as just sort of a guide to a scary situation. Um, and this may or may not be in reference to current news and market information over this weekend. I want to be clear, I have no idea what's going to happen. And this, what I want to talk about just in a minute or two here is what I want to talk about actually doesn't matter in terms of what happens. I have found this to be sort of a universal approach and, and to thinking through this concept of risk and scary markets, like risk when uncertainty shows up. And this, again, is broader than just markets. I think this it's a conversation I've had with my venture capital friends today. Um, this is a conversation I've had with my entrepreneur friends today. So I just want to walk you through it real quick. So the reality is risk is what's left over after we think we've thought of everything. You know, the car that hits and kills you is not the one you saw, right? It's the one you never saw. So it's sort of a like contextual principle, number one, like risk is. So this idea of risk management is, yeah, there are certain things we can do. And then real risk is what's left over after you've done all those things. And sometimes that shows up. It's called risk, right? And I know in a technical sense, it's actually called uncertainty, but it's okay. We're just going to roll with it here. Number two, risk is an arbitrary concept until you experience it. In other words, like, Thinking about getting punched in the face is much different than actually getting punched in the face. So, you know, stress tests, you know, lifeboat drills, all of those things, useful as they are, don't really prepare you for the feeling that you have when uncertainty shows up in your life. You know, when you're running a business and you're not sure you're going to be able to make payroll next week, right? So those are just sort of contextual backdrops that are, I think, are really important in terms of understanding that, that how to navigate a scary or risky situation, right? So here's the principles I've found or the activities I've found to be the most valuable. The reality is we live in a complex adaptive system. Markets are complex adaptive systems. Uncertainty shows up, right? Markets are often moved from complex even into chaos, but complex adaptive systems. And when uncertainty shows up, really the only way to navigate a complex adaptive system, and adaptive is important because like your interaction with the system actually changes the system. And we've seen that very clearly the last couple of days. Your interaction with the system changed the system. So complex adaptive. The only way to navigate a complex adaptive system is to get really clear about where you are in the moment right? Like, where are we right now? And sometimes that's like, where are we? And it's like in a really like calm, low volatility environment that could be like, you know, where are we right now? And we're thinking in terms of a year sometimes. And, and in fact, the, the rate at which you cycle through what I'm about to outline is largely driven by the volatility of the situation. It may be like, oh, I only cycle through this once a year. It may be, I'm going to go through it every 10 minutes. Right? So number one, get really clear about where you are today like, and um, like unashamed, uh, like unsparing is the word I was looking for, like really clear about where you are today. And then you solve for the next local optimum. So what's the next step we can take? Because so many times when risk and uncertainty show up, you get punched in the face. You are confused, dazed, mad, upset, all of those scared to death fight or flight, like all of that stuff needs to be unwound a little bit. And the only way to do it is to be, you know, just unsparing in your assessment of where you are and then say, okay, let's solve for the next local optimum, the next step, the very next step. What can I do next? Right? So in solving for the next step, I find that the, the, like, in fact, this sketch is often the, like the feeling that you have, right? I, I get really clear about where I am and now I'm going to go into this complexity. Like there's going to be nuance and a whole bunch of stuff I don't know. So I find like 
talking to people, reading the news, like trying to find clear information that's moving so fast anyway, but if you can just get like some sense, I find that to be helpful when you're in the middle of this piece right here, right? But realize how it feels. It feels very confusing. It feels unstable. It feels unsettling. It feels unmooring. Like I can't get my grip on it. I mean, one example is like, it, just a simple example. Have you ever bought new running shoes? And have you read the reviews on Amazon about new running shoes? Did you feel more or less clear after you read the reviews? Well, you felt less clear. This is even you know, amplified, obviously. But we get some sense. But at some moment, we have to just say, that's enough. I've got enough. I found it helpful sometimes even to put a, a, a time limit on that. Like, I'm going to spend three hours. You know, super volatile situation, I'm going to spend an hour. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to talk to the best people I can. Okay, then I have to just take a large breath at some point and say, I got to guess based on all the research. I know we're uncomfortable with this term of guess, but that's what it is. Based on all the research, this is the next step. Now, I find making the step as small as possible, I call it a micro action. Take action. Because no matter the amount of analysis I'm going to do, I'm paralyzed, I'm going to, I'm going to analyze everything to, the, to death, we're going to get at some point where there's no new information available. That's it. There's just story and myth bouncing around. There's no new information available. The only way I'm going to get new information is literally to move just a little bit forward, right? Like if you just think about this in your office right now, or wherever you're sitting, you look around and you absorb everything you can. You try really hard. You build spreadsheets about everything I can see from where I'm sitting right now. If I just stand up and take one step forward, there's new information becomes available. So there's just some little micro action. In a scary environment, take micro actions because they're micro scary. What will happen when we take that micro action is new information will become available. It might be micro, but just a little bit of new information. And then we repeat the process. What do we do? Get super clear about where we are. Super clear. Go into the nuance chaos machine, right? Like consider all the variables, get feedback, think about it, take a micro action. And then we just repeat. I mean, that can look like, hey, you know, you make a call here. I can see like two founders getting on the phone with their VCs. Hey, what do we do here? Who are you going to call? Who are you going to call? Okay, cool. Let's be back in 15 minutes and let's, what did you learn? Okay, cool. Where are we now? All right. And this, this cycle, again, you can see like the flow, the, the throughput of this process, this cycle, this decision-making cycle, this navigation cycle is super sped up in really, really uncertain environments. Okay, cool. What did you learn? Okay, good. All right. You know what it sounds like? What do you think? Okay. <gasps> Deep breath. Don't forget that. Like a little bit of intuition. What feels? Like after all the facts, there's some element of this like, I got to just feel myself through. I got to feel my way through this. I, again, please don't misunderstand what I just said. After all the facts, I've got to feel my way through this. Right? So complex adaptive system, get super clear about where I am today, unsparing, like we got to be clear here. By the way, that, like, that may help to communicate with team, like direct and clear, right? And communication around what we know, not speculation about what we don't, right? Then I solve for the next local, I gather information, I solve for the next local optimum, and I repeat, right? I take action, new information shows up, that new perspective allows me to reassess where I am, and I just keep repeating over and over and over. Now, in that process, I think from a like um, a, a emotional resource point of view, one thing that's super helpful to me is to have some sense of like, what are the things that matter in this situation? You might even want to think of this as a Venn diagram, right? Well, yeah, look, this Venn diagram, I know it's blurry, but it's, it's in the backdrop, right? Maybe we can make a, on one side of a piece of paper, actually just pull out a big piece of paper. Right? Pull out your phone, whatever. Start listing the things that matter. Payroll matters. You know, vendors matter. Money coming in matters. Right? Like the things that matter. And there'd probably be this long list. And then start to go through, and you can think of it as Venn diagram, or you can just think, take that same list and highlight the things over which you have some control. Now, one suggestion, and this is new in, in like a, over a decade of thinking about this, one thing that's really important in the things you can control bucket is push the edges of that thought, 
like really explain, like, is there anything we can do here? Like, do we have any control back to our micro action? Like, is there anything we can do here? It really pushed, play a thought experiment, really pushing the edges of that control. Because it, it, there's going to be things on the list you have no control over. And there's going to be other things on the list that you thought you had no control over, but like there might be something around the edges that if you just play a little thought experiment game, if you will, you'll find something. Okay, but then at the end, what we have is this list of things that matter with highlighted or the Venn diagram here, things that matter and over which we have some control. Right? So then we take action and we're back to our little loop. Right? Very similar to the Oda loop, right? So we clear about where we are. We're going to assess our current situation. We're going we're gonna to dive in, think about all the nuance, and get really clear about the next local optimum, the next step. We're going to take it. New information will show up. Right? And then the last thing I found really helpful, just from a, like emotional resourcing point of view, is to, when we get through that process, okay, we're gonna take this next step and we're gonna wait for new information to show up. I love having some statement that simply tells me like, what, at what point are we going to reassess? Like, what new information would warrant a reassessment of our current action? Hey, 15 minutes, get back to me after you talk to the bank. Okay, then we got 15 minutes. It could be, hey, it's Sunday morning, Sunday at four. I'm going to take the whole day because no new information has become available. And it doesn't warrant, it doesn't help me to sit here and obsessively worry about this situation because no new information has become available. It warrants relooking at this at four, right? And, and again, when you're not in a hyper volatile situation like this, it may be like, you know what? It's not until two weeks from now when so-and-so gets back from a trip. But I just think it's really helpful to establish the conditions under which you're going to reevaluate. Cheers, my friends. I hope that is helpful. Bye.